First place to the second place. Now remember, we always read from left to right. So anytime you're looking at right to the left, start by start with your left point and see how you can get to your right point. Okay, so to get to my to the point on the right, I have two balls, two, I have two arrows, two. So if I'm going up, that's five or two. And then I have two one, one, two, three. And again, that's five to two from the right to the right. So my slope is going to be my right, I went up two, and I ran three. So my slope is two thirds. Now, well, let's say that I didn't want to think of slope as right to the right. Okay, so I'm given two points. The other option is I can put them on a table. X and Y, um, my first point is 2 and negative 5, and my second point is 5 and negative 3. To go from 2 to 5, I have to add 3. From negative 5 to negative 3, I have to add 2. And if you think of the slope this way, we can say that our slope, M, is delta Y, the change in Y, and then the change in X, delta X which in this case would be the change in the y is positive 2 over the change in the x, which is positive 2. So either way, I will still end up with the slope is 2 thirds. Um, again, you have the first option or you have the second option. So the answer is B, 2 thirds. Number five, find the rate of change for the situation. You run seven miles one hour or 21 miles in three hours. You run seven miles in one hour. Okay, so three miles per hour. Three hours, seven miles, miles per hour. Okay, anytime we're looking at the rate of change, we're looking at the change of something or the change of something else. When you're looking at speed, you would say miles per hour. So A and B make sense. Three hours and seven miles, that's not a rate of change. You know, that's not the change in anything. So that's not B. Now here I'm saying seven miles over one hour. So seven miles in one hour. And I also have 21 miles over 3 hours. 7 over 1 is the same thing as 7, and miles over hours is the same thing as miles per hour. Which makes sense because if you're covering 21 miles over three hours, then that means that every hour that went by, you covered seven miles. So seven times three will give us 21, which is what we would cover in three hours. So our answer is seven miles per hour. that we learned about finding slope to find the answer. A, we're given the equation, but we need to solve it for y. So the very first thing I'm going to start doing in um, answer choice A is to solve for y. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. 3y minus 5x equals 6. Now my goal is to get 3y on the side by itself, and the only 
best way you can do that is if my room gets 5x, you get a check. Now, how can I move from minus 5x? Well, I just need to add 5x. Normally, I would write the 5x on the side of 6, but then again, I don't have enough space to put it right in underneath. So I'm left with 3y equals 6 plus 5x. Now, I want to get that y by itself. I don't want 3y to do something, I want y to do something. Now, anytime we have a number in front of a variable like this, that is multiplication. The opposite is division. So I'm going to divide each small thing by 3. And I'm left with y equals 2 plus 5 over 3x, which I can easily rewrite as 5 over 3x plus 2. Now remember, anytime we're looking at slopes, we need to use m to represent slopes. And that is because anytime we're looking at the equation, y equals mx plus b, slope is the number in front of x. And in this case, that number happens to be 5 thirds. We're looking for a line that does not have a slope of 5 thirds, so A is not our answer. If we look at, if we look at B, we're getting too close. So I can just start by drawing a slope of A. It has 0, negative 2, and 3, and 7. To go from 0 to 3, I have 3. To go from 2 to 7, I have to add 2. And so this slope is delta y over delta x, which is the same thing as positive 5 over 3. And I see that my slope for, for that to put b is also 5 thirds. So that's not my answer. I'm looking for the one that does not have that slope. For c, I'm going to put two points, any two points. And if you're looking at the foldable that we made earlier, Anytime you're looking at a graph, you want to think of slope as right over right. Again, we read from left to right, so we're going to start from the left point to get to the right point. And to get there, we're going to have to go one, two, three, four, five. And actually, not five. But if you look at the scale, this goes on by two, so I can go up. 6 to negative 4, you have to add 3, and so forth. So 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now, to get to my point, all right, so my right was 10, but I have to run 2, 4, and 6. So my slope is 10 over 6, and if I put that in my calculator, 10 over 6 is the same thing as 5 over 3. Again, we're looking for the one that does not have a slope of 5 over 3, so that is not my answer. B has to be the answer. Um, the diagonal is telling me that I have to do subtract 1, subtract 1. And if I'm looking at how to place B, um, again, right, the slope is the same thing y over the tangent x. The tangent y is negative 1 and the tangent x is 2. So the slope of b is negative 1 half, which is not 5 thirds, so the answer is b. Again, this one was tricky because we had to use all four different ways that we know how of uh, finding a slope to figure out the answer. Um, again, it's always helpful to use our foldable that we made. Number 8, find the slope of a line described by x minus 3y equals negative 6. Now again, I want to put this in terms of, uh, I want to put it in slope intercept form, meaning I want to solve for y. I want to get this equation to look like this. Because if I get it to look like that, then I know that whatever's in front of the x is at the right slope, which is what I'm looking for. So I start by drawing a line. My goal is to get this minus 3y by itself. And I could move it to the other side, but in that case, I would end up with the same.
just have a line of two of that. I don't like that. So instead, I'm going to have a line of that over there, and I'm going to have to get rid of this x. Now, this is a positive x. So the opposite would be cross x on both sides. And then I'm going to have to minus x on the side of negative 6 because they're not like terms. They're not going to cancel each other out. They're not going to combine. You cannot combine them. They have to stay separate. So I'm left with negative 2 to 1 equals negative 6 minus x. Now, to get rid of this uh, negative 3 in front of y, I have to do the opposite of multiplying by negative 3, which is to divide by negative 3. I divide everything by negative 3. So you have to divide by negative 3, which is 1, because there's one y on each y. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. And remember, and so we're going to be looking how the number of cross is going to be with the 1. And so I put this in my calculator. Negative 1 divided by negative 3. And I take math and enter twice. Uh, my calculator tells me that this is the same thing as 1 third. So I'm left with um, y equals, and I'm going to rewrite it over here. y equals 1 third x plus 2. And I already, I just did that by slope. So the left of x is 1 third. So my answer is 1 third. Okay, so the very last problem, find the slope of the y-intercept of y. Not the last problem in the chapter, but it's the last problem I'm going to go over. Um, again, if you look at the slope of y, then anytime you're looking at an equation, the n sets the slope. the y-intercept. The slope here, the number in front of the x is 1 third. But you already see that it's not 3, so it's not n. It's not negative 3, it's not b. And it is not 3, 4, so it's not c. The only one that makes sense is b. So our answer is b. Okay, so go ahead and finish up the practice. Um, if you have any questions, you can send me any, you can send me emails to school again, or you can stay after school. And um, we can go through the practice before you test tomorrow.